Uh, this afternoon, NC State has had to announce uh, a very difficult decision, and that is the, the closing of our on-campus residence halls, except for a number of students, a few students that will meet certain exceptions and uh, will be allowed to stay on campus. We've had to make this difficult decision because this has been a very difficult week for NC State. The spread of the virus uh, has been unrelenting, and we've seen, as compared to the announcement we made last week, we've seen far too much evidence of growth and spread of the virus in on-campus residential halls. And it's just simply become untenable for us to continue to offer on-campus housing to such a large number of undergraduates. We currently have about 6,500 on campus, and it's clear that we're just not going to be able to meet the required social distancing guidelines and be able to keep our students uh, safe and healthy on campus. So we've made this difficult decision and announced it today to our students. Students will have an opportunity to apply for exceptions. Criteria for those exceptions will largely be based on the, uh, the inability of students to leave for travel restrictions because they're international or out of state. Our students that have financial hardships or housing insecurity issues that make staying in campus housing critical for their continued success. Our students that maybe come from rural parts of the state that may have less connectivity over the internet and not be in a position to continue to learn from our online courses. In addition, of course, many of our graduate students, a few of which live in on-campus housing, would be allowed to stay because of the fact that they're still taking in-person classes and conducting research in our, in our lab facilities. Uh, the move out for our students that are leaving will begin uh, tomorrow and go for 11 days. They'll schedule an appointment to move out so that we can limit the number of people coming and going at any one time, and that will last for uh, 11 days through September 6th, Sunday, September 6th, give people plenty of time to, to meet the requirement of moving out. Those seeking to stay will begin immediately asking for exceptions, and that review will take place very quickly, and we'll be able to address their concerns as quickly as we can. As we did last week when we announced that students would be allowed to leave residence hall um, by their choice, given the spread of the virus, uh, we, we will continue to offer prorated uh, refunds on all unused housing and dining bills that they've already paid. Um, this is a difficult decision because as a as a university that's focused in North Carolina, that has a vast majority of our students from North Carolina, and it's so well supported by the taxpayers of North Carolina, we wanted to do everything we could to open safely and positively for our students. Our faculty and staff worked very hard over the summer to prepare for the return of our students, and that return has largely been successful on campus. But as you all know, we've had significant issues both off campus and now in campus residence halls. So the continuation just, uh, at least in the residential mode that we believe is so important to student learning has just become too difficult. So with that, let me stop and see what questions you have for me. I can't point to one issue. I mean, we the, look, the whole higher education community was confident. We were working hard to make sure that we had guidelines in place. Those guidelines have been very successful. Uh, our, our faculty and staff have largely been unaffected by this because they're on campus following, following the guidelines. Uh, the campus classroom experience has been largely unaffected by this. We've had no outbreaks in classrooms. We've had no outbreaks in in research labs. So we have, and we put in place, like so many other campuses, the guidelines that we, that CDC recommended that we believe would be successful. What, I, I think what all of us in higher education have come to appreciate is how unforgiving this virus is among uh, a young population. 
and uh, how quickly it spreads and how so many are asymptomatic, don't know they have the virus. And because of that, because it, no one wants to have the virus and no one wants to spread the virus. But uh, we've had uh, many, many cases where, you know, asymptomatic people have, have spread the virus. So I think um, we're all learning a lot about this as we go. And that's no different for NC State than any university across the country. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it, if I pin this on an individual or one group, I would likely be wrong. Uh, but I think it's, it's very clear. I certainly don't want to pit one student group against another student group. The reality is uh, we did see the virus first appear in off-campus events and off-campus housing. And I know that that's had an impact across campus. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the folks that have been involved in that activity or other activities like that will, will have to live with that, those decisions. I mean, we're, all of us know that we're dealing with a very special time in young people's lives. And, and so, you know, it, it happened. And so for the schools that have not gone back yet, yeah, um, they're learning a lot, aren't they? What would you say? Because Carolina, Duke, UNC, a lot of schools around the country have been in the exact same shoes today. Yeah. What would you I, say I, to those places? Well, actually, I think it's as important to not only what you would say to the schools, but what the students learn that are at those schools. Um, you know, the, I think the, the one thing that I would caution is that you, you, need, you need adequate testing. And we're testing uh, you know, 500 a day. Um, if you think about the average state testing, you know, 20,000, 30,000 at the peak, you know, we're testing a lot. And you've got to have a strong surveillance program so that you understand what's happening on your campus that's asymptomatic because so much of this is asymptomatic. And, you know, you've got to work. We worked hard to try to communicate to our students and to our campus about what our community standards were. And we continue to do that. So I would just emphasize all of those points. But the key point is to, is to be prepared. Um, I mean, another reason that I've not described today that we're, we're struggling with is the ability to quarantine and isolate all these students, which, of course, is, is something that is absolutely paramount to continuing the health and safety of our campus. And, uh, you know, today we had over 900 students in quarantine and isolation, both on campus and off campus. And the ability to do that and do it effectively is something that you've got to be prepared for. Chancellor, how many, how many students do you expect to move out by this September Yeah, I, boy, that's a, that's a $9 million question. Um, we currently have, let me start by saying the announcement that you were here for last week, where we wanted to give students the opportunity to remain in campus housing because we have very little spread. Students in campus housing are really taking this seriously. A lot of our students are. And, um, and so we wanted to give them the opportunity to be successful. And we know that the on-campus experience is such a large part of that. But frankly, we thought the offer of, of moving out would be, would be better received than it was. And so we had, of, uh, we started before the announcement last week with around 7,500 on campus. We have a maximum capacity of 10,000, so we were already down, and that was intentional. And we had around 1,000 uh, accept us on the offer to move out. And so it didn't, it didn't have the kind of impact that we thought it would have had. And, but we were still comfortable because we were monitoring. We, we knew the numbers, the spread was not significant in residence halls. We had no clusters in residence halls. 
And as you've seen, we've announced uh, several just this week. So, yes, I mean, um, we would like to get to uh, to a rate where the density in the residence hall is one person per room per bathroom. I know that's a little bit of nuance, but uh, some of our uh, on-campus housing is suites that have, let's say, four bedrooms and two bathrooms. A suite like that, we only want two people in because we want everyone to have their own on restroom facilities. Yeah, so that would get us to around 2,000. Okay. And do you have a sense of where these students who leave will go? I mean, won't, won't some of them, as has already happened, just end up in these apartments and houses around campus? Well, you know, they very well could. And that's certainly not something that that we have control over or are encouraging. The other thing I need to make clear that, you know, any student leaving our campus has, if they're in quarantine or in isolation, cannot leave until they're cleared by student health. And any student leaving our campus will be directed both by us and the Department of Health and Human Services to self-quarantine for 14 days. So uh, I know that there may be some students that are seeking housing here in Raleigh, and, uh, but they will still be subject to the executive order of the governor and the and uh, the community standards of the university. Chancellor, where do you guys go from here in terms of academics, but also athletics? You yourself use the word this virus is unrelenting. Yeah. Football season is approaching. What makes you guys confident that that could still be done safely? Well, uh, <laughs> you would have to talk to, I mean, the coaches and athletic directors across the ACC have been, uh, very pleased with um, the resilience of the athletes and the commitments the athletes have to quarantine, to isolation. Not because they have the virus, but because they don't want to get the virus. I think that, um, you know, time will tell. It's critical that we have adequate testing and it, whether we're able to field a team because of adequate testing. But that, you know, that's a conference decision that we're all trying to work together on. Yes. Well, if I'm not mistaken, NC State is still the largest in school, It is. So what type of financial impact will having all of these students well, on the ground have? Will we see uh, layoffs? Uh, well, let me start with, um, I think the majority of you know that in North Carolina, we're very well supported by the people of North Carolina. The majority of our funds comes from the state of North Carolina. And, and we have a good budget this year. NC State has not seen, uh, the other reason for the announcement, uh, I mean, the, the reason is for health and safety, but one of the reasons this timing is so critical is that we extended what we call census day until Friday. Census day is when a student is allowed to withdraw from the university and get the vast majority of their tuition and fees refunded. Of course, they're, they're withdrawing from, from uh, class. And uh, at this point in time, we've seen very, very few withdrawals. So the vast majority of our students are sticking with higher education and trying to get through this virus the way all of us are every day. Um, so most of our financial implications for a decision like this are really embedded in what we call auxiliary enterprises, like housing and dining. Housing is the biggest challenge because a lot of the cost of housing is fixed cost. You've got to pay it regardless. And, but dining can be managed. You don't buy as much food, uh, but certainly we will, have, we will have furloughs associated with those areas because they're people intensive and we don't have the revenue to support them. What are the plans for the dining halls? Well, that'll depend somewhat on um, on where the students are and where we settle out with numbers. We're gonna feed the students that are on campus. And um, depending on, and, and obviously, well, obvious to me, we want our students to be distributed so that they can be socially distanced and, and we can reduce density. That means that we likely are going to have to have more than one dining hall available. Uh, but we'll have to work through all of those things once we understand how many students are left uh, in housing. Chancellor, the announcement at WRL, the announcement 
question is, is fairly new, but have you heard from any students about how they feel about this decision? The, the announcement is fairly new, and I'm confident I will. <laughs> I, honestly, I haven't been, you know, sitting up there looking at my email, but I'm sure it's, I've got a few, I suspect. Looking Look, forward to a few from us. <laughs> well, our students want to be here. Our parents want our students to be here, but they expect us to create an environment where they can be safe, and and that's our number one priority. And uh, as I said, it's becoming untenable to to provide on-campus housing and meet that threshold of health and safety. So we're we're addressing the immediate concern, which is yes, you will get a refund for unused housing and dining receipts. Well, we don't have a lot of authority over what they do when they get home, but DHHS has asked us, and we agree, that everyone leaving campus, whether they've been in touch, contact with the virus, or whether they've tested, I mean, if they've tested positive, or they're in isolation or quarantine because of proximity to the virus, they're not going home until student health says they can. But those students that are leaving, that those two things are not true, we will ask them to self-quarantine for 14 days. And, and I didn't mention this before, if a student is seeking to remain on campus because they have a vulnerable parent or sibling at home, that will be a critical reason why we would allow them to stay. Yeah, actually, um, there's not a plan, but that doesn't mean there won't be one. It, it wouldn't be for a full week, though, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing it over an extended period of time and why it includes two weekends. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, so there's no...